Well, what will climate change do to San Diego four decades from now? That is the focus of a major new report from the San Diego Foundation. Lauren is joining us early with a look at how the warmer weather will mean greater demands for our electrical power. Lauren? Kimberly, that's exactly right. Energy producers in the West are already pushing the limit of power production during peak demands. That's the difficulty in preparing for the future. They must plan for the peaks, and in a warmer climate, there will be many more of them. What a year it's been. To date, San Diego has experienced 14 heat waves, 14 stretches of three days or more with temperatures above 90. That's the thing with global warming. It doesn't mean every day is warmer, but the average temperatures are creeping up. By 2050, uh, the scenarios that we've looked at indicate that the temperature will rise probably by something between a degree and a half Fahrenheit and up to as much as four degrees Fahrenheit. Most days we'll hardly notice it, but during heat waves, hot days will be even hotter. We have a heat wave in San Diego County, and instead of the heat wave topping out at 95 degrees Fahrenheit, it's 98. In 2050, another million and a half people will live here, and most of them will live inland, where there's more land and more heat. I'm Steve Messner, and I'm a climate change researcher for Scientific Applications International, SAIC. Steve and his group of researchers had the unenviable job of figuring out how we might provide power to more people in a warmer and carbon-constrained climate. We were asked to look at the energy situation as it might appear in year 2050. With more people, we're going to need more electrical power in the next 40 years. A lot more electrical power. By some estimates, 70% more. The question is, how will we generate that power? If we do it the same way we're doing it now, it's likely to lead to even more warming. Planning for that peak is, 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 is a real challenge, even in current utility planning. In the future, it's going to be even more of a problem, just because climate is and temperature is increasing faster than sometimes we have modeled in the past, we're just getting to grips with that fact. Wind and solar will provide more of our power, but the trouble is that the wind and the sun aren't always there when they're needed most. So as we try to reduce fossil fuel use, we may well need more of it to keep up with the greater power demand. That's quite a few power plants when you, when you run the numbers uh, by 2050, just because of that increased demand for that summertime peak. These dire predictions should serve as a call to action to reduce our carbon footprint. If we don't, the consequences will be challenging even to our health. Tomorrow night at 7, we'll look at how climate change kills. Mm. Mm. You know, we were just talking about that just for a second there. Uh, what about the wind farms? And we have enough wind here, but what about more of those? Wind and solar, the trouble is they have to plan for peak demand, mm -hmm. and peak demand generally comes later in the day when wind and solar are less uh, mm. available. So they have to build the carbon or the, uh, the fossil fuel plants to, to keep them in, in, in the power there at mm -hmm. the time that they really need it. Will you give us a lot of ideas on little things we can all do every day? And you talk about them you know, throughout the days, but mm -hmm. all of that adds up. Yeah, it really does. These little things like um, you know, uh, lumping your trips together and things like that. And, and you know what? That's, that's something we should do more of. 